Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. It was a cunning and devilish scheme with a pattern that touched three countries and crisscrossed an ocean between. Ken Thurston was called in late, but then the last stages of any game are always the most dangerous. I don't know whether you've heard about the deal or not, Ken. Mm -hmm. I'll know more about it when Miss Brooks gets that call through to Pringle. Anyway, one of the food commissions up here in the U.S. contracted to buy a million-dollar order of canned beef from the Gallivan Export Packing Company in Montevideo. Mm, Gallivan Export. Huh? Yeah. In fact, uh, they advanced half the payment to this company so they could step up operations and make quicker delivery. The canning job was finished about ten days ago. The meat intended for European relief? It uh, was. What do you mean, Chief? Well, the inspector for the commission airmailed sample cans to Washington the first of the week. Can... Every sample was spoiled. Only thing they could do was order the whole ship and destroy it. Oh, fine. And with the food situation over there the way it is. Yeah. Well, it's probably nothing more than a bum job of processing. But anyway, Pringle went down there, and I had the papers on the deal sent up here to the Bureau. In fact, they uh, only got here a little while ago. They, uh... Good Lord. What's the matter, Chief? Well, this report. Look how it's signed. Hmm? Food Commission Inspector, Uruguay Division... P. Zellschmidt. Pagan. Now, how the Sam hell did that bird-brained little scoundrel ever get tied up with... Oh, excuse me. This must be... Uh... Yes, Miss Brooks? Fine. Uh, she's through to Montevideo. Good. Hello? Hotel Regina? Let me talk to William Pringle. What? Uh, uh, no. No, thanks. Ken. All right, Chief. Let's have it. Bill Pringle was accidentally killed at 1.45 this afternoon. He fell out of his hotel window. Bill Pringle. Good a friend as I've ever known. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was an accident. But if it wasn't, then somebody's going to pay for it. You can count on that. Chief, I'm going to Montevideo. Straight ahead? Yes, Senor Thurston. The office is there in the far corner of the warehouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. Lieutenant, um, what do you know about this Mr. Gallivan? Very little, Senor, except that he is the owner of this concern. The export packing company has never been subject to police investigation before. Oh, it isn't now. It's just that I'm following a hunch, that's all. Oh, seems to be a visitor leaving. Again, my thanks, Mr. Gallivant. You may be able to work things out. Oh, well. Lieutenant Rubin. I'm sorry, I don't believe... Ah, oh, yes, the lady from France. Yes, Lieutenant. Jean de Leon, remember? But, of course, I checked your passport when you arrived on the plane yesterday. Uh, may I present Senor Thurston? Senor Thurston. How do you do, huh? You are a resident of this beautiful little city, monsieur? No, no, I just got in from the States a few hours ago. Apparently, we're both visitors. How nice. And have we not found a lovely place to visit? Imagine having summer in December. Yeah, well, then, of course, it will be winter here next July. Things usually balance up, mademoiselle. Yes, yes, I suppose they do. Mm. I had not thought of it that way. I, uh, I am staying at the Hotel Regina, monsieur. Au revoir. <laughs> hmm. Senor Thurston, I envy you. In one minute, you have made a conquest. I wonder. Ah, such elegance, charm. And the perfume she was wearing. Ah. Yeah, yes. Lieutenant, uh, Mr. Gallivan, you remember? Of course. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> shall we go in? Huh? Oh, Lieutenant Ruby, come in. Come Thank in. you. Uh, Senor Gallivan, this is Senor Thurston. Mr. Thurston? Senor Thurston right. is from the Bureau in New York. I see. Uh, won't you sit down, gentlemen? 
Uh, Senor Gullivan, the little lady who left, uh, she is a friend of yours, perhaps? Oh, Mr. Leona? <laughs> Charming, isn't she? Uh, sorry I couldn't oblige her. She wanted a job. I don't see how you could refuse her. Well, it wasn't easy. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Thurston, if the commission sent you down here to turn the heat on for the money they advance, well, I haven't got it, and I don't know how I can get it. I'm not interested in money right at the moment, Mr. Gullivan, but I... I would like to know what caused the whole shipload of canned meat to turn out bad. So would I. When your inspector called and gave me that report from Washington, I just couldn't believe him. Now, as I understand it, the commission ordered the shipment destroyed. Is that right? Yes. And that would mean another big expense. If it hadn't been for the generosity of Monsieur Valton. Who's Valton? I only met him two days ago. A man with a badly scarred face. He's an agent for the French-Uruguay steamship lines. Arranged to take the stuff aboard the New York-bound freighter Polonaise. It left Montevideo yesterday. But the entire order's condemned. Why ship it in New York? Well, they put it in deck storage. It'll be dumped at sea. Sure. Pretty tragic for the hungry people in Europe who needed that food. I think it may be quite unfortunate for Monsieur Vartan. the father of my father oh, my father... Oh, pipe the... down, Pagan. But, but... Inspector Velschmidt. Mr. X, you always said I should work at something honest for a change. <laughs> you were joking, of course, but... Pagan, um... you can't even spell honest. A capital O and... Oh, skip it. Whatever gave you the idea of working for the food commission in the first place? <laughs> for 500 bucks a month? I, I mean, I saw my duty. And, and I did it. They practically drafted me. Why, the general manager of the Congress called me up and said... I've already seen that letter of recommendation. Said to me, he said... Oh, oh, you mean the letter you wrote? I mean the letter you wrote and signed my name to. But you were out of town. And anyway, I knew how, how you felt about it. Oh, sure. Irreproachable character, highest ethics, a genius who speaks nine languages fluently. But... You can't even speak one language. But, but... Down here to sample a million-dollar meat order. Why, you wouldn't know how to sample shoe polish. Huh? That just goes to show you. So I didn't. I hired an expert. You what? Sure, a little Uruguay named Pedro Zapato. <laughs> what a sucker. He did it for practically nothing. I'll bet. Well, he was recommended by my very close friend, Monsieur Noble. <laughs> the <clears throat> French consul, you know. And well, how did you get to be a close friend of the French consul? Oh, he dropped around last week just to pay a socialist call, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I do understand, Pagan. Tell me, what does this Monsieur Noble look like? Ah, very distinguished. Strictly first class big shot. Why... He even used to fight duels, Mr. X. Scars all over his face. And so I can assure you, Monsieur Thurston, that during the three years I have been company agent here in Montevideo, no one by the name of Valton has ever been connected with the French Uruguay line. Well? And also, as I told you, the French consul has been up in Panama for the past ten days. He will not return before sometime next week. I see. There's one more thing. One of your freighters, the Polonaise, sailed New York yesterday. Oh, but you have been misinformed, monsieur. The Polonaise is bound for La Havre, France, not New York. What do you know about a shipment of canned meat to be dumped overboard somewhere at sea? Oh, monsieur is joking. <laughs> there, there, there is no such shipment. Huh? A large consignment of that type was shipped by, uh, by, uh... Ah, yes, yes, Mr. Smith. Smith, eh? But most certainly not to be dumped overboard. You see, here, here. Destination, they are France. Do you happen to remember anything about the appearance of this Mr. Smith? Oh, just an ordinary man. Except for some rather deep scars on his face. Well, thanks for your trouble. I won't take up any more of your time. No, no trouble at all. The motto of our line is service with a smile at low cost. How inspiring. Good day. Uh -huh. So there you are, Mr. Thurston. I thought you were going to stay there all day. If I'd known you were out here, I would have. Well, so long, Pagan. But Mr. Rex, he said for us to wait right here at the bottom of this little alley. He, he wants, went to make a phone call. Who did? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. My very dear friend, the, the French Council. I see. He came down here with you, huh? Oh, sure. He's very anxious to meet you. As soon as he gets back, of course. Yeah. Gets back from Panama, as a matter of fact. Huh? Mr. Rex, what's the matter with that driver? Hey, look out where you're backing the truck. Wait, there's no driver in that truck? But then why... Never mind, move, fast. Oh! Oh, no. Mr. Thurston. It 
hit that building. Right where we were standing. Yeah, yeah. Nice that we'd still been there. But whatever made it... Oh, there's the council now getting in the car street. Uh, look, up the street. Uh, you who? Here we are, right over... Mr. X, he's driving off. License number 4C697. I guess he didn't see us, Mr. Thurston. Hey, go. You want a bet? This hotel begin is not such a hot dump. <laughs> Why don't you get a suit over my hotel? Couldn't stand the glamour, Pagan. Diplomats, consuls all over the place. I still don't understand why he drove off down there in the street. No. You know. Go on in. Anyway, if he's not a consul, then what's all this all about? Pagan, it's about a million dollars worth of canned meat that somebody wants to make five million out of on the French black market. Oh, well, and that... <laughs> Mr. X, what kind of a shaving lotion do you use? Not the kind you're smelling. It's a little French import named Jean de Leone. I've had a visitor. French import? That reminds me, how could anybody sell that meat when it's no good? That's what I'm going to ask your helper as soon as I can get Lieutenant Rubin to pick him up. You mean my friend Pedro Zapato? But he... Uh... Hello, operator. Get me Lieutenant Rubin at the Montevideo police. No, never mind, operator. But, Mr. Thurgood, how come you changed your mind? Hagar, it'd be pretty silly to have the police hunt for a man when you already know where he is. Huh? Yeah. Come and take a look behind this bed. Now to continue, Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Somewhere out in the South Atlantic, a cargo of canned meat is heading for the French black market. While down in Uruguay a few minutes ago, Ken Thurston walked into his hotel suite to find the murdered body of Pedro Zapato, the man he'd hoped might supply some of his answers. Right now, Ken and Pagan are making a hurried visit to Pedro's room. There's something very suspicious about that Lieutenant Rubin fellow, Mr. Thurston. Why should he have this address of Pedro's in his file? That alleged assistant of yours was a crook, Pagan. And he was working for a killer. I don't see how you can say such things. Why, why the French consul himself, monsieur... Um... Monsieur which? Noble or Valton or Smith? It's been all three. Well, all right, then. I suppose you think I'm stupid. Pagan, don't tempt me. Uh, 26B, here we are. <laughs> the door's open. Come on. You don't think maybe somebody's here? It has been anyway. Smell that same perfume? Yeah. Hey, look at this joint. Yeah. Oh, well, Mr. X, why should anybody tear everything up? Maybe somebody didn't want Pedro Zapata to do any talking, dead or alive. Mr. X, what's that? Oh, oh. Oh, the telephone. Hello. Senor Thurston? Lieutenant Rubin. Somebody's already been here. They've torn the place to pieces. Uh, that I was afraid of. But I have traced the license number you gave. Good, let's have it. The car belongs to a public rental agency at 104 Avenue Positas. 104 Avenue Positas. All right, Lieutenant, now's the time to put the lid on. Block every exit out of Montevideo. Make it fast. Ah, yes, indeed, senores. That number is the license of one of our autos. The car is sitting in the back room at the moment. Uh, when was it turned in? That particular car was rented by the customer at precisely 1.48 yesterday afternoon. 1.48? It was returned this evening at 5.26, something over one hour ago. And who was the customer? A uh, Mr. Smith. Smith, eh? Um, fellow with a scarred face? As a matter of fact, yes. <sighs> Your friend again, Pagan. You know, Mr. Thurston, it's funny he never told me his name was really Smith. It is somewhat remarkable, this inquiry of yours. Only a little while ago, a young lady was asking about the same man. So? What does she look like? Ah, ravishing. Such elegance, such style, such... Yeah, such perfume. But how did you know? He's somewhere in Montevideo. He's on foot, and he can't very well hide that face. 
Pagon, start working from here. Ask every cab driver up the avenue if he's seen this Smith or Valton or Noble guy. Mr. Sir Thurston, you can count on me. When you find out anything, I'll be at the hotel. Now get moving. I'll drag the double crosser in by my heels. Oh, uh, Pagon. Remember how Pedro looked? Sure, I'll mutilate him. I'll. I'll. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I didn't know you were talking on the phone. Quiet, quiet, please. Hello, Ken. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, she's listed all right in the French file. Jeanne de Leone. Want a description of her? Oh, no, 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 Chief. I don't need it. I've seen her. Now, look, Ken, if you've got some... Thanks a lot. So long, Chief. Pagon, why aren't you busy trying to track Volton? Because I have already. He's out that expert packing company joint. Sure about that? Well, that, that's where some cab driver took him about an hour ago. An hour ago? Oh, come on, Pagon. Let's go. Cookie. Oh, you see, I, I became lost here in the dark, Monsieur Thurston. I, I was going to call on Mr. Gallivan. Yeah, well, uh, I'll take a gun. Thanks. Mr. Leone, I know who you are. I know what you are. But how could you know? <laughs> because he is the man called X. He's... <gasps> oh, no. Come on. Let's go ahead and pay that visit you were planning. Huh? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Inspector Zoltz. Good evening, Mr. Gallivan. Mr. Gallivan, we just caught a housebreaker outside of your warehouse. This little cauliflower here. What? Why, it's Miss DeLeone. Say, what's going on here? Can't blame you for wondering, Mr. Gallivan. The moves are coming pretty fast in this game. Has Monsieur Valton been here? Valton? Of course not. As far as I know, he's on a freighter headed for New York. Mr. Thurston, I just figured it out. This guy, Gallivan, is Valton. What? Sure, sure. Why not? He uses makeup to look like scars on his face. He's just a Dr. Jerkle and Mr. Hyde. Grab it. Oh, pipe down, Pagan. I saw Valton and he didn't weigh any more than Mr. Leone here. Then who is guilty, Mr. Thurston? Monsieur Valton. Huh? Who's that? Come in, Lieutenant. Who is... I came as quickly as possible after I received your message, Senor Thurston. Well, you're right on time, Lieutenant Rubin. The only person we need now is Monsieur Valton. And I suppose you are going to tell us what has happened to him. Yes. I wouldn't reach into that drawer, Mr. Gallivan. Mr. Rubin has you covered. You will please not move, Senor Gallivan. Pagan, that looks like a closet back of the desk there. Why don't you take a look? Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. I'll be glad to. May have to have the place searched, Lieutenant, but I did smell powder smoke when I came in here. It's him. Both of He's in there with holes all over him. Well, Mr. Gallivan? He's the one who did it, Barton. He talked me into it. He's the one who killed Pringle and Zapato. Oh, no. He might have killed Pedro Zapato, but not Bill Pringle. Because at the very moment that happened, Valton was halfway across town renting a car. What? Bill Pringle was my friend, Gallivan. Before I came down here, I swore somebody was going to pay for killing him. All right, now. Talk and tell the truth. Wait a minute. Where does this little De Leone number fit in? Pago, Mademoiselle De Leone is an agent of the French there. Huh? That is correct, monsieur. You see, I followed Monsieur Valton from France, where he was one of the leaders of the black market. Well, <laughs> that's that, Mr. Thurston. I guess we did it. Oh, sure, sure. Yes, we did it all right. Yes. Mademoiselle, I suggest you cable your headquarters and arrange a reception for that freighter when it gets to La I shall take care of the matter, Monsieur Thurston. And may I offer my sympathy in the loss of your friend? Thanks, Mademoiselle. I don't know. He died so a cargo of food could reach the starving people it was meant for. Maybe that's a very small reason for a man to give up his life. Maybe it's the biggest reason in the world. Marshall. 
Thanks for being with us. Next week, as usual, Leon Velasco will be along in the role of Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.